have Grady. He's, Grady's a good kitty. He's not a good kitty. Yes, he is. All kitties are good kitties. He tried to kill me this morning. Did he? Yes, I'm I'm sleeping, sound asleep. And because I didn't take my decongestants last night, because I'm getting older and falling apart, I take decongestants so I can breathe while I'm sleeping. I didn't take my decongestants, so I was sleeping like this. <gasps> ladies, ladies, he's single. And I was woken up to something on my in and on and around and suddenly inside my mouth. Oh, and I like, and I look, and this little fur butt, you hey, stuck, boy. you stuck your face in my mouth. <laughs> His entire head was in my. He's like, what is in here? And I'm like, I haven't. Human, human be quiet. <laughs> There's noise coming out of that hole. Stop it. We sniff it around, and then I'm like, you realize I haven't brushed my teeth yet, right? I, I I need to you you got that can't be You're good. You're talking to an animal that licks his own ass. Yeah, that's true. You do lick your own butt, don't you? Miracle likes to shove her whiskers up my nose. Like she's got to sleep like right up in my grill, so her whiskers end up up my nose or like in my ear. Did you know that when this video goes up on Channel Awesome, there's somebody who like every week posts a comment with, "Go to this." This many minutes and this many seconds if you don't want to hear them talk about their cats. Well, that that we should probably make the entire show about talking about cats. I think we should. Yeah. Because fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. You hear that, Grady? They hate you. The internet hates you. You don't care. That's the appropriate response. M Miracle hates the internet, so... He's learned not to care, which is the appropriate response. You were, you've learned well. Yes. For a little. Okay, I'm going to put you aside right now because I have to do the news. Somebody on Twitter thought they were insulting me today by calling me an ugly cat lady. I pissed off the white supremacists again. <laughs> Tara, would you leave the National Socialists alone? No, because they're so fun to fuck with. And he, he responded by calling me an ugly cat lady. And I'm like... I think... Hey, do you think calling me a cat lady offends me? I have a cat stroller right here. I think if, if I either like of us... I a stroller and take her outside. I'm a cat lady. I'm cool with it. I think if either of us qualifies as the ugly cat lady, it would be me. <laughs> no. Let's, let's just, let's be fair there. But I'm like, I mean, if you think I'm ugly, that's fine. That's you do you. But... Well, not not to say anything about people's life choices or whatnot, but calling a cat lady not really hurting me, and I'm like, a, I, I it's like calling Tony Stark a narcissist. I'm like, agreed. I have to say, if I were a cat lady, I would be a very ugly cat lady. Let's let's just be completely honest here. I mean, the beard. Well, no, it's not even the beard. That's not super. It's not even the beard. It's you know, not saying anything about you know who wants to be what and gender or whatnot. I just say, if I were a female. I'd be kind of ugly. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not built for it. Hmm. I don't have the right cheekbones, do I? I don't really either, and I have basset hound cheeks because I'm old. But you know, <laughs> they're telling me it's all fun and games till someone threatens me, which is I have been uniquely lucky. Lucky, I am a woman on the internet who's an asshole, and somehow I don't get a lot of threats. That's not an invitation. <laughs> I do appreciate how uniquely lucky I am yeah. in that regard because people kind of don't fuck with me that much. But maybe it's because I'm marrying a guy who knows how to make all sorts of chemical agents. I don't know. But, and, will, you know. and will just for funsies. Yeah. You give him a beer, he'll be like, hang on, I'll go make some dynamite. Like, wait, wait a second. It'll be fun. Yeah, I know. Just chill. I know. Uh... But no, I, I mean... That's nothing to fuck with. And I actually got in an argument with somebody about, they were like, well, you can't take all that shit seriously. 99 out of 100 are mean nothing. And I'm like, yeah, but then there's that one. How it's like, it's like Russian roulette only with assholes. Yeah. You can't be sure if this is the asshole that's going to want to try and kill you. Fucking internet. <sighs> anyway. But I mean, the white supremacists, they just make it too easy. They do. Bless your heart. 
bless, bless, bless your pointy hatted little heart. It's shooting dead fish in a barrel. I know. <sighs> no, it's fucking Illinois Nazis, man. Anyway, I forget you haven't seen Blues Brothers. Why haven't you seen? And this one today, I'm pretty sure, was also a furry. <laughs> well, so I'm like, wow. If that... you're a furry, shouldn't you be psyched that I'm a cat lady? Maybe you're not that kind of furry. Maybe you're a mouse furry and that offends you. Uh, all right. Well, it's time for the news. Are you ready? Grady, I have to, we have to shift. I need my other hand back. You <laughs> Look at this. It's like, no. No, fuck you. Grady. Fuck you and your stupid internet show, man. I'm comfy. How are you comfy, though? I don't even understand. You, you are comfy because in the Because cat. Yeah, because cat. I'm learning that. Anyway, let's get the intro going here. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And, you know, sometimes there's a story... And I guess this says a lot about what I've chosen to do with my life. Sometimes there's a story that not one person sends me. Not two people send me. But the whole internet. The entire internet sends me a story because they're thinking, hey guys, this is right up Nash's alley. When I think of Nash, what do I think of? Well, I think of... <laughs> that. That's like a Rorschach test of a question, isn't it? I think of men... Paying for sex with rare monkeys. that That's what people think of when they think of me. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Do you think it's because they think you do that? What, that I would pay for sex with a monkey? I mean, you really like monkeys. Yeah, but I really like monkeys. That doesn't mean everyone really likes monkeys. Is that what you mean by let the monkeys loose? No, that is not. Police say owner of Zany Zoo Pet Store tipped prostitute with a bush baby. Eugene Police Department says it recovered a stolen bush baby from a, a prostitute. They say the owner of Zany Zoo Pet Store in Eugene used the bush baby to tip the prostitute for her services. According to police, uh, the pet store reported burglaries on March 1st and March 6th. They say stolen property included Girl Scout cookie, monkey, uh, cookie money, a uh, laptop computer and the primate. Now, what happened here was the guy who owned the place claimed he the that someone came in and stole his bush baby and also the Girl Scout cookie money and a laptop. When in fact, Don't steal from the Girl Scouts, you asshole. When in fact, he'd done the stealing himself. But instead of trying to tip the prostitute with the Girl Scout cookie monkey money, which obviously that would have been bad. He decided, no, nah, I'm going to keep the money. Here, lady, you did such a good job with the sex. With the have a monkey. Which... Um, that's not currency. <laughs> no. Also, I didn't know a bush baby was an actual animal. I thought it was just a horrible racial slur. No, it's it's it, that's what it is. It's a little monkey. It's a lemur or lemur you know, type. It's a real word for something. So when you said that, I was like, Dude, that's not okay. Oh. <laughs> that's not okay. No, it is okay. Because they actually, that's why it's a slur. Because there was an animal called the bush baby. And they, yeah. 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 We, we ruin it's everything. Still not currency. White people ruin everything. But yeah, still not, not currency. Not, you, you can't pay for goods and services with monkeys. With monkey. <laughs> No, especially, no you especially you can't pay for sex with a monkey because how did that like, did he have it with him the whole time? <laughs> did the monkey watch? Because <laughs> I feel like you're I mean, you're to... <laughs> they've seen a lot of shit. They probably wouldn't even be faced by that. They'd be like, all right, you want your monkey to watch? Whatever. <laughs> Like, got, like phone sex operators and prostitutes probably have seen every level of the spectrum of humanity. So I doubt much would phase them. But I'm just like, did he did the monkey hide in his bag? Did he have it subdued somehow? 
Did it like <laughs> sit there and watch? What? That's a little awkward to have a monkey in this situation the whole time. And then be like, and by the way, it's now your monkey. <laughs> Here, you did a good job. You earned the monkey. Which, how would you take that as a prostitute? Wow, what, what exactly did I do? Yeah, that... how many stars does that equate to on Yelp? <laughs> how many stars is a monkey? See, I stole this money from the Girl Scouts, but I'd rather give you this monkey instead and keep the money for myself. But, you know, that was bad. I'm not sure if this is better or worse. It's it's hard to gauge. It's always hard to gauge these sorts of things. Uh, speaking of pay, that's not money. Um, Mankato business paid employees in meth. The owner oh. of a Mankato auto repair shop is under arrest after authorities say he offered employees a bonus in the form of meth. Agents from the Minnesota River Valley Task uh, Drug Task Force conducted a search warrant of Clear Choice Auto Body Repair Shop. This is after an employee Clear Choice told authorities the owner, 40-year-old Jesse Michael Sh uh, Seifert, and his girlfriend, Nancy Jean Aloen, both of Mankato, have been paying employees of Clear Choice in methamphetamine. So, like, for one thing, I get. I think your car would get fixed really fucking fast. Yeah, maybe that's what he's going for. <laughs> but everyone's worked a job where your boss tries to motivate you with some shitty reward, right? Yeah. Like, whoever gets the best numbers this week, it's ten dollars Starbucks gift card, or some shitty thing that nobody actually wants. Right. Like. Give me a day off paid and yeah. I'll work my ass off for you. For the $10 Starbucks gift card, whatever, dude. This is really bringing that up a notch. Like maybe he's just really fucking having trouble <laughs> motivating his crew. And he's like, fine, you know what? I'll buy your drugs. I mean, it's innovative thinking. It's innovative thinking. But you know what the, the, the problem here is? And this is going to be this is it's not legal. Well, yeah, there's that. But even worse, and I say this having just been uh, self-employed, taking care of my taxes a few weeks ago. You got to report that shit on your taxes. Yeah. How do you report? Man, you, you have to report the bonus and how it works. You have to report that shit on your taxes. They don't fuck around with that. Even if it's illegal revenue, they don't fuck around with that. You make money, they're getting their piece. Although I was always told that that's why you should tip wait staff in cash, because then they don't have to do nah. It's not on paper. They don't get taxed on it. Yeah, well, it's still, it's still fucking So counts. I try to do that when I can. It still counts. <laughs> yeah, H&R Block, how do I report being paid in meth? <laughs> Now, like, I made a poor H&R Block man's life very, very difficult last year because I had two years of unfiled taxes in three different states. Tara! With, like, three different jobs, and one of them was freelance. Tara! I, I, I fucked up trying to file the next year, and I couldn't figure out how to fix it, so it just rolled over, and I, I fixed it. It's all fixed now. I'm legal. Okay, good. But this poor man was just like... I'm here to ruin your life. That's... And still, at no point did I say, now how do I declare my mess? <sighs> I, I just, was he, expect, how did he expect this to, to get away with this? Did he like just have like an employee meeting and start off by saying, okay, is everyone here cool? Are you cool? Are you cool? Are, is everybody cool? Is anyone here a member of law enforcement? I You have to answer honestly if I ask that question. The next question, like, what's your business model like if you assume that your employees will be cool with this? 
Like, what are what's your business model and hiring practices like if you're assuming your work staff is fine with that? I guess they're not drug testing. Yeah, clearly they're not drug testing. <laughs> clearly not drug testing. Yeah, I'm getting paid in drugs, but on the other hand, they're testing to make sure you're using them. <laughs> I don't know. I'm actually kind of tempted to take my car there now to see how fast it gets fixed. Oh, I am not a tax cheat. No, you're just a tax fuck up. Don't worry. I, I don't... sucked up and lapsed for a year and I I've... fixed it. When I started doing the self-employed shit, I was a tax it's fuck hard. up too. Yeah. It's and not I had as... regular W-2s and then I had freelance for like, it's hard. It's not easy. And I tried to do it myself and I fucked it up. And TurboTax doesn't let you redo it once they take your money. No. So, um, let's, was high school sports a big thing when you were going to high school? Uh, some of them. Our football team was notoriously terrible, but we had yeah. a good soccer team. Ours was basketball. Our, our football team sucked. We had a decent basketball team. Our music program was bigger than anything. Like, my high school was really renowned for its music program. I wish. I wish. It was backwards with mine. Fucking South Carolina. Anyway. Um, so, they, they do make a lot of concessions to get wins when it comes to... Yeah. I think this one went a little too far... Windsor High School basketball ball star found to be 30 years old. Oh. In a stunning development, a star center for a Canadian high school basketball team was exposed as a 30-year-old African refugee. Lean has been detained in connection with the Immigration Refugee Protection Act. According to the Windsor Star, 30-year-old South Sudanese native Jonathan Nicola was a star center for the Central Catholic Comets throughout the 2015 to 2016 season. The six foot nine, 202 pounders spent the previous months during the academic year, year living with uh, Central Catholic base, uh, basketball coach Pete uh, Cusimano as part of the Canada Homestay program while living in the country on a student visa. So the coach knew the coach took in this 30-year-old refugee and said, hey, you know what? Oh, sounds like he didn't. What? He didn't? It says that <clears throat> they he was misrepresenting his age. How now, do you... I don't know how you wouldn't be able to tell, because I can tell you I looked a whole hell of a lot different at 30 than I did at 18. Yes! But yes! It's kind of sad, actually, because clearly he was looking... For a better opportunity in life, and now that's gone, probably. Yeah, but why would you? Why would you even try? I, I have some trouble believing that people believed this because a thirty-year-old per. Well, I mean, some people do look young for their age, I guess. Bullshit. But a thirty-year-old person generally looks different than an eighteen-year-old person, particularly when you're talking about someone who's six foot fucking nine. Okay, so what's your age? Seventeen. Really? Se 17. So, you're 17. Yes, I'm 17. Dude, your fake ID is amazing! <laughs> he was always the one buying beer at the parties, because he had the best fake ID. <laughs> I'm pretty sure... Every, nobody... I'm pretty sure everyone knew. They just didn't know. But they yeah, knew. Like some looking the other way going on. Well, sure. I just feel bad for him, though, because... Yeah, because he's going to get, you know, deported and get, shit. Right. That sucks. But that's a stupid fucking thing to get deported for. Yeah. I mean, you made it into a refugee program, which is not easy. Don't. Don't fuck that up. And it's really then, hard. And then was like, you know what? I should be keeping a low profile and just wait for my status to get approved and maybe just, you know, survive here. That is not a place that's being blown the fuck up all the time. And they have, you know, food and shelter and, you know, it's it's and a government that's not trying to shoot itself all the time. Maybe I should just chill and stay. Now nah, I want to play basketball. But 
But think about like maybe that was his big dream in life. <laughs> no, maybe his big dream in life was to be a basketball star. And the way you do it is you get noticed in high school, scouted by a college. Like I can see where this would happen and I can see where somebody would do this. How long do you think you can keep that shit up? I don't know that I can see everybody falling for it. Yeah. <sighs> well, remember when we had the uh, the online contest to name the boat, the research vessel for uh, the, the yes, British Yes, Bodie McBoatface. Yeah, it was the internet. They opened it up to the internet, and the decision was... <laughs> Never open it up to the internet. Never. The decision was Bodie McBoatface. Well... An elementary school in Austin. Oh, I saw this. Yeah, they, they have been named Robert E. Lee Elementary, which obviously is a bit problematic in the modern era, seeing that Robert yeah. E. Lee was a Confederate general who was fighting for the right of states to keep people as property. Yeah. So the elementary school thinks they want to change the name. They solicited the community for suggestions. Well, Never solicit the community for suggestions. They got the suggestions all right. The recommendations, feedback from the community, and school parents. Parents, mind you. Some of these suggestions came from parents. Yeah, but it is Texas. So, you know. The top 10. Number one, Donald J. Trump Elementary. 45 Which is ironic, because I don't think he passed elementary school. At number two, Robert E. Lee Elementary with 34 nominations. So you want to rename the school the exact same name. Well, that's your people that are pissed off that they want to change it. And yeah. just, you know. Yeah. Um, other options were the Adolf Hitler School for Friendship and Tolerance, eight nominations. I think they were trying to be clever and failed entirely. Yeah, yeah. Do you think we like Hitler? Do you think we like... Is, is and that apparently just, we nominated everyone famous we could think of with the last name Lee. Yeah, Harper Lee, Russell Lee. Uh Lee Elementary. They wanted to try to still no, no David Lee Roth though. That's a shame. Other more notable but less voted names include B Movie, Bodie McBoatface Elementary School, Adam Lanza's School of Fun. <laughs> Do you know who Adam Lanza is? No. That's the kid who shot up Sandy Hook. Lovely. Let's not name a fucking elementary school after him. That's not even funny. And one of them, of course, is Hypothetical Perfect Persons Memorial Elementary School. And Schooly McSchoolerson. Oh, and John Cena Elementary. Bleeding Heart Liberal Interman Elementary. Just... Gee, yeah. you, you really, really, really want to honor the memory of a dude who fought to own people. Do, do, do you see how some of us might find that idea abhorrent? No, they don't. What's Obviously. wrong with owning people? They want to name a fucking school after Donald Trump. A guy who speaks at an elementary school level. You know, the, the, the uh, Texas GOP. They're like a local dignitary. All my elementary schools in my town were named after like local people. Yeah. Who did things? Wasn't there somebody fucking local from Austin who's done something of import that somebody could have nominated? That would be nice. Mine was Alice Burney Elementary School and R.B. Stahl High School. Do you know who either of those people are? No. Nope. I went to Francis J. O'Neill Elementary School. I don't, I don't even know who Francis J. O'Neill is. I probably should. I'm not even making this up. The Texas GOP is petitioning at their uh, their state convention. They're going to open up for a vote for uh, succession. I heard that. Secession. And they every time they do that, it. I'm like, bye, bitches. But go. What cracks me up about it, too, is they think they're going to keep NASA. Yeah, no. Like, every time that comes up, they're like, oh, well, you'll be sorry when you lose NASA. And I'm like, you don't. 
You're not going to keep NASA it's if you leave federal. the country. Yeah, it's a federal. Right. NASA is going to leave. You as are creatures. all the companies based in your state that will then lose all their federal funding and tax benefits. And they don't understand that part. Like the army. They don't get that part. Yeah. It's like they want to leave. They just don't want to leave. They want to leave, but not leave, leave. Right. <clears throat> yeah. They want to threaten to leave, so you beg them to stay. We're not. We're and really the thing is, all of America is kind of like, like, we're at the point where we're like Willy Wonka. Like, no, please don't. <sighs> ah, well. And I'm sure there are people watching who are from Texas, and I'm sure you're probably very nice people, and I'm sorry that the people in charge of your state are fucking dick canoes, but life is hard. Like, the guy in charge of my state's a fucking dick canoe. It sucks. He not for much longer. He dead. Two years, at least. Dead man walking, though. Dead man Two walking. fucking years. Dead man walking. Um, let's head on back to Florida, the other place... They don't threaten to leave, but God, we wish they would. I know. If Florida wanted to secede, I think everybody would be like, you know what? Don't even worry about it. Just, just we cool. Just go. We're cool. We just need go. you out for Puerto Rico so fucking fast. <laughs> it's fine. We won't even have to change the stars on the flag. Puerto Rico, you guys are in. You're up. And as to why people may feel that way, well, here's another one of those stories. Man busted for having sex, sex in public pool, chasing and trying to hit children. 28-year-old man who became angry when asked to stop having sex in a community pool faces charges of assault and lewd and lascivious behavior. Witness say the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office deputy that Austin David Misiak was having sexual intercourse in the pool at Heather Glenn Apartments on Saturday with an unknown woman. When they asked him to stop because there were children present, he got out and started chasing kids and trying to hit them. Why didn't anybody ask him to stop? Because chlorinated water is the worst lube ever. <laughs> Why did anybody suggest that maybe he might not want to burn the skin off his dick? I mean, well, I guess that's just clearing out the gene pool a little. But well, I love the fact that's not what we mean by the gene pool, though. It's I not a literal pool. I love the fact that he's, they were like, "There's children present." His response was, "Okay, I'll fix that," I'll and he goes after the kids. He then yelled at an adult male who tried to walk away before turning to a 15-year-old girl who told him to stop chasing the children and the other man. Misiak moved toward her as if he was going to hit her, at which point her boyfriend stepped in front to protect her. Misiak, who was highly intoxicated, tried to hit the boyfriend, who was also a juvenile, but missed. The boyfriend landed two punches. Mike is now listing for me all the types of acid that would make worse lube. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Misiak refused to give an explanation to the deputy, saying only that, quote, nothing happened. Well, no, something obviously did happen. Well, here's here's the thing. couple things this guy might not know. One, water is see-through. Yes. Two, air is also see-through. So when you're fucking someone in water... And running around hitting children, people know those things. Air is see-through. At least it should be. <laughs> yeah, if you can't see through the air, there's an entirely different problem, but... My God, man! Nothing happened. The it's fuck you say? Thing. It's after... I don't know what your comment is trying to tell me. Look, just don't argue with me about this. It's it's not a good... Yeah, don't be fucking in public pools. No. Don't... Why are you... Why is this the... Well, why is this your well, actually? I have a friend who did that at a con. Public not pool? Not realizing that the reg room overlooked the hotel pool. Oh, no. Yeah. 
So they're fucking in the pool, and everyone at the party is just like, huh, well, this is happening. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're ju- gauging your technique. They're holding up score signs. Yeah. You know? I mean, they're cammy, so. Only got four points from the Tremere judge. <laughs> the Tremere judge is such a dick. <laughs> Uh, finally tonight, it was uh, 4.20 this last week. Yeah, it was. 4.20, the joke that fucking refuses to die, even as marijuana becomes more and more uh, okay socially. You know, 4.20 doesn't annoy me half as much as fucking talk like a fucking pirate dick. <laughs> I don't know who invented that. I don't know why it got invented, but I would really like to punch whoever it was in the fucking face and have them need an eye patch after I'm done with them because that's the most annoying shit in the world. Well, th- this happened amazingly close. This was reported on April 17th. So this was you were early, just in time for 420. Comes to us from New Zealand. Dope destruction clouds waft into supermarket car park. That's a weird sentence. Grocery shoppers in Tarangi. I think that's how I say it. Tarangi? Uh, yeah. Hang on, I'm waiting for it to load. Yeah, I would guess Tarangi. Tarangi? Grocery, sh- grocery shoppers in Tarangi on Friday have could have been forgiven thinking they were extras in a Cheech and Chong movie production. Billowing clouds of marijuana-scented smoke were sent wafting across from the town's police station over the road and into the car park outside the New World supermarket. Police bosses have apologized to the town folk for the accidental inundation of dope-laden vapors, which were emanating from a furnace at the police station where a recently hired hall, recently acquired hall of the illegal harvest was being incinerated. Wow. So it was the cops? Yeah. The cops got the whole town high. The cops got, apparently it was, th- uh, police recovered how much, I think it was thousands of cannabis plants. I mean, at least it was the parking lot of a supermarket. So when everybody got the munchies, they were in the right place. No, well, it's bad though. Everyone got the munchies, but no one remembered to pay. And the checkers didn't remember to take money. True. So, yeah, they they did a a brisk business, but they didn't make very much. But wouldn't that be like if if you had just one cashier with a fucking rage intolerance, wouldn't that be a great business model for a grocery (laughs) store? Just fucking pipe pot through the vents. Well, yeah. they say never shop when you're hungry. This seems like an act from like a, a bad comedy movie. If I ran a grocery store, I would totally do that. Or like a pizza restaurant. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is just like, you know, this is like a really bad comedy where the cops are just bumbling police. Well, we have all these drugs. We need to get rid of them. Let's burn them in the furnace. That's a yeah, great How do you idea. think that's a good idea to burn a drug that people smoke in ridiculously high quantities? You know that entire police office was suddenly giggling like crazy and didn't understand why. It's like that fucking Foo Fighters video. (sighs) Just, could you, that's one of those, it's just, how does this fuck, and not, and not three days before 420, too. This is, this is one of those stars aligned sort of things. The whole town can celebrate. Everyone getting fucked up. That's pretty funny. I mean, hopefully nobody got hurt. I'm assuming not, but no, that's no one. Funny. No one got. Hurt. It kind of illustrates how how we're a little drug policy is a little bit stupid. We have to destroy the plants, but they don't outline a safe way of doing so. And I kind of picture most of New Zealand being like the Shire anyway. (laughs) Pipeweed, baby. So (laughs) I'm kind of just picturing a bunch of hobbits just partying out. (laughs) I look forward to your letters. New New Zealand's like, what? No, God 
fucking Tolkien. God damn you. Oh, that's, that's your cross to bear now. I think the first thing we learned this week is is proper ventilation is key. And yeah. also check your headwinds when disposing of of drugs. If you're going to burn them, check your fucking headwinds. <clears throat> we learned air is see-through or should be. Also, water is water is see-through and chlorine is terrible lube. Chlorine is terrible lube. We've learned that even parents can be assholes. Because they trump elementary. God help us if that were to come to pass. We've learned that... You know what? I'd rather that come to pass than him getting to be president. I'll take Trump elementary any day. We've learned that um, when it comes to uh, high school sports, maybe sometimes you should check ID. You, 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 you need to card them. Card your sports stars. Yeah, we've that learned. Is okay. And finally, this week we've learned that neither monkeys nor meth are valid forms of currency. We are not. We are. The economy has not fallen to the point where we're back on the barter system. We're doing okay. If we're bartering for monkeys and drugs, do you think the prostitute accepted the monkey? I would. If I. I like, do you think she took it? <laughs> well, d d I was wondering, probably she, do you, do you have anything smaller? <laughs> Couple gerbils, maybe. <laughs> like, what do you do in that situation where someone offers you a monkey? Like, no, thank you. Is that, I don't know, we're going to have to check and see what's the etiquette on refusing monkeys after sex. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what Emily Post has to say about that one. 